Yo, yo, yo. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the Best Practice Show Podcast. My name is Kirk Baird. And if you're joining us for the first time, I love this stuff. You're going to see dentistry is an awesome profession. And my job here is to bring you the best thinkers, the best leaders, the best speakers in all of dentistry to bring you best practices to help your practice get better and ultimately your life get better. And today, you're going to see that happen in real time. We found a great friend during the COVID conference, Manal Sampat, who I didn't know who she was. And then we had her on and I'm like, she's a genius. And today we talk about how to not spend money on marketing and still get great results. You're going to love this. So listen to the episode. I hope you enjoy it and we'll see you soon. Hey guys, welcome back to another awesome edition of the Best Practice to Show podcast. My name is Kirk Barron, and I love this because I get to hang out with rock stars in dentistry who are often like crazy smart, and I don't even know how they do what they do, and they're so insightful and so helpful. So if you've ever asked the question, how the heck can I not spend money on marketing and still get results? Well, I have the answer today from a good friend of ours in the ACT community. Her name is Manal Sampat, who I got to know you during the COVID conference. And so I'll just tell a quick story, but then I want people to know who you are. So AB on our team, she always, she's like our, I don't know, I don't know how you say it, but she's like our new talent coordinator. She's like, okay, listen, I know about this. I'm like, who is this person? And she's, she's like, Manal. And I'm like, I've never heard of Manal. We brought you on. And I was like watching, I'm like, she's brilliant. And so I told you this before we hit the go button. We secretly stalk you. Like one of the questions I often ask people is, who do you stalk? My team stalks you. They watch you on social media. You have great ideas on how to do things. And, we're, you know, I'm the worst personally at social media. So today you're going to learn a different way of thinking. But now let's start here. I always like people to know who we're listening to. So give us a little bit of your bio before we get into this topic. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And my pleasure. I love your team. I love that they stalk me. That just means I'm doing my job right. If they don't stalk me, there's a problem. Then you right. shouldn't have me on the show at all, you know? <laughs> no, but you know, I started, I was born in India. I grew up in St. Thomas in the US Virgin Islands. I went to Rutgers and I now I live in Washington State with my husband. So kind of all over the world and all over the United States, but that's what I love to do. And I started in dentistry in college. I was pre-dental student. So I studied communication and I studied biology. And as a part of being a pre-dental student, you have to shadow a dentist. So here I was, you know, in my early years, I was a sophomore in college. And I remember that I had to fax my resume when fax was a thing. You know, you literally put that paper in that machine and you have to type the numbers in. It seems so old now, but it's not that old, you know. Well, here we are. So this is this entire thing going on now. And this dental practice with 25,000 patients kind of calls me back and says, come on in and shadow us. Edit, can you hear me echo? I hear you I okay? perfectly. I thought, that okay. was an, I thought that was an error when you said 25,000 patients. I'm like, holy moly. Are you sure 25,000 no, or 2,500? Yeah, 25,000. 25, That's so, crazy. Uh, huge, huge practice, a pedo orthodontic practice. And so I went and I shadowed there now. You know, I was a work study student. I was on scholarship at the school. I didn't buy a car until I got a job, the whole thing. So I remember taking the bus and going there and shadowing them for two, three weeks. And they offered me a job, but I was already a work study student studying multiple things. So I was like, I can't take it now. And then I decided that I really, really, really love communication, which is marketing, business, PR. And even though I was pre-dental and doing all the bio courses and I was, that was the path to go to, I really, really loved communication. So I had to call my East Indian father and all the stereotypes you hear are true. We are either doctors, engineers, or business owners. We have no other options. So here I am on the phone with my father saying, dad, so you know what? I really want to go into business and not apply to dental schools. And he's like, are you kidding me? 
I'm like, I'm just telling you, we're going to make this happen. So he's like, fine. Well, that you have to figure this out and you have to make sure that, you know, you make this work. Okay. Well, I graduated in 2008. What a year to graduate. No so kidding. here I am. <laughs> so here I am, decided not to go to dental school. The next thing I know, I'm like, I'm going to go into business. And the next thing I know is the whole world is falling apart. Nobody's hiring. What do I do now? So I called this dental practice. I'm like, hey, remember me? I know you offered me a job two years ago. I just finished. I have a bachelor's degree in communication and biology. I'm ready to work. When, what can I come? And the office manager, she's like, well, we are not hiring. We have 60 people working here. It's the recession, you know, but come on in at noon. And I know that noon was your lunchtime and you never say no to networking, right? So I went to it. And the next thing I know, uh, I'm being interviewed by the office manager. The next thing I know after that, the owner of this practice comes and says, we have no idea what you're going to do, mm -hmm. but we just like you. So we are just going to hire you and we'll just see where you fit in. And they kind enough to train me in multiple different areas of the practice. So I did the scheduling, you know, I did the recalls and I was at the front desk and I was in the lab and I was helping out and I was a floater and I was doing all these things. And as a millennial who just graduated from college and I studied marketing, I took over their marketing. The next thing we know, the results were amazing. Things were coming in. And then he had people calling him saying, what are you doing in your marketing? We keep seeing you everywhere. And then he will hand the phone to me and be like, talk to her. She's the one doing it. Well, 2013 rolls around and I launched my first marketing company by breaking a Guinness World Record. And then in 2019, I rebrand everything as Manal Stamp at LLC because we went from doing marketing to being, I became a complete marketing strategist. And we changed into all of that. And now uh, I have a best-selling book and Forbes has decided they like me. So they keep mentioning my stuff and industry is amazing. I'm just in a very loving industry and the people uh, who I worked with, you know, sometimes I get these questions. And I'm like, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. I really am. I was at the right place, right time. But then I really got that support and guidance from people and they trusted me. So I'm very thankful to be where I am today. Well, your path of success is not like a mystery. I mean, every we love you when we just met you, you know, not too long ago. So I have no doubt that you've had a great past with that. Now I got to go back to a couple of things. Tell us about the strategist position like what did that mean for you when you went from a marketing company to a strategist what does that mean well a marketing company is you do everything in marketing right so i'll give you a perfect example marketing is websites seo google adwords management reviews all that stuff marketing strategy is what am i going to do in my marketing if i'm doing this is this actually producing results what should i do what should i avoid because kirk the reality is all marketing works and all marketing does not work there are practices and companies out there who will say, you know what, do print mailers. Print mailers are amazing. We get hundreds of patients from it. And then we have practices that are like, absolutely not. Never do print mailers. They're horrible for us. They never work for us. It's with, true with everything. So what is right for you? What is not right for you? How do you get around it? And what I realized was that my real success came from not adding more marketing, but leveraging the marketing businesses we're doing specifically practices we're doing. So I'll give you a very specific example for our listeners so they can understand, right? So everybody who's listening here probably has a website. And on that website, they have an about us page. And on that about us page, I'm sure that they have the same, you know, you, start, you kind of sign, you know, stand sideways, your hands are crossed, and you have a little nudge on the side, and you give a little smile, and that's your photo. And then right next to it, you have where you grew up, where you went to school, all the organizations you belong to, all the accolades you have, and on the bottom, it will have, in the free time, Dr. Kirk loves to go skiing. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're listening, that's your bio. Yes. Marketing is, let's have a website. Let's have an about us page on the website. Marketing strategy is completely different. Marketing strategy is, yes, you have a website. You have an about us page. Now, I'm a hygienist as well. And as a hygienist, I worked in a pediatric dental practice. So let's just say that you were to go to a pediatric dental practice where I happen to work. You go to the About Us page, there's not a photo of me. Instead, there's a video and it goes something like this. Hi, my name is Manal Sampat. I was born in India. I grew up in the Virgin Islands and now I get to work at this amazing A, B, and C pediatric dental practice. One of my favorite things to do is to laugh. I have that big belly laugh that you could just hear from the other room. But you know, when I'm looking at the photos of me as a child growing up in India, I wasn't laughing loud or smiling big because 
I was embarrassed. I had black spots on my teeth. Today, I'm a pediatric dental hygienist because I don't want any child to feel like they cannot smile big and laugh out loud. I look forward to meeting you and your family. And just underneath that video, a couple of bullet points on where I went to school and the accolades I have. Yeah. I love marketing, that. Marketing strategy. I love that. If I could heart the screen, I'd go heart, 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 <laughs> heart. Like, I don't know anything about those. But like, I would, all, I would pick you as my hygienist. I wouldn't want anyone. Well, I mean, I'm sure all the videos are nice. But like, uh, now, now give us a little insight on why and how important you know, video is, you know, some people might be listening and go, okay, is that really that going to make that much of a difference? I believe it would. Why? Like, tell us why. Well, so there's three different things behind this strategy. The number one thing is I know my audience. So if I am in a pediatric dental practice, for example, my audience are parents who are anxious to bring their kids to the dentist. So they want to know from my experience that I understand that I went through that. I was that child and I can help your child because I don't want your child to feel anxious, right? So I'm speaking directly to my audience. And the number one thing in marketing is know your audience. But in our field, in dentistry, we never talk about knowing your audience. When I ask a GP practice who your audience is, they're like, well, you know, age two to 85, whoever comes in, but that's five different generations. Right. They all react to things differently. They buy differently. They, you know, they people, like you were just telling me and you're like, well, I don't know about the social media stuff. I do not understand this stuff or I do not understand, but you know, Right. And you're like shocked that podcast actually works. Well, it's similar. And then you would talk to somebody else with a different generation. And they're like, what do you mean you don't, you're not on TikTok? Like, come on, how could you not be on TikTok? Right. Right. Five different generations, five different kinds of consumers who are trying to buy from you. So the first is to know your audience and you can replicate this no matter who your audience is. The second thing is video is powerful because they get to see you. They get to connect with you. They get to see your smile. They got to see who you are as an individual. It's very you know, you could do the makeup, you could add the filters, you could do all of that. But the video is something where your personality is going to come through. Yeah. It's weird. Like it's, it's weird, weird how, you know, and you know how this works. Like this is, I, I'm an idiot, but like I was in a grocery store one time and this lady's like, oh my gosh. I'm like, what? I'm just getting something from this. She's like, oh my gosh. I'm like, what? She's like, you're the guy in the video. I'm like, you could do it too. It's you too. Like, she's like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I, can I get out of here? It's weird because they, they, there's a certain connection that happens with video. It's weird. I can't even describe it. I don't even know how, I don't even know why. And, um, you know, we've heard all the age old things that when Google bought YouTube, that was a real mm -hmm. deal. And now I don't even know how much video is actually uploaded to the internet every single day, but I know we could go down the side, this path of video, but I want to go back to this. Can we go back to this Manal? Cause like, sure, sure. you got to keep go. us on the rails. Cause I could, I could turn this into a two hour podcast easily. You're brilliant. I want you to talk about the why when it comes to the title of this, why we have to think differently and not spend money in marketing and give us a little history lesson because you hear these stories too. I spent so much money on marketing. Oh my God, free patients from it. So why is this topic so important right now? Well, because we live in a world where we have solutions to problems that don't exist. You know, I will get somebody who will reach out to me and I'm a marketing strategist and I'm a coach, right? So for example, the video part. A, a website, according to Forbes, a website with a video gets an average user spent 88% more time on a website with a video than without. Why? Because we are nosy people. Think about it. All the listeners who are listening. If you go to a website and there's a video, you press the play button. Every you just time. You do every time because we are nosy people. That's why social media is so successful. Totally. Well, when you, Right. But when your website does not have a video, you just keep scrolling. You just kind of bounce out and leave. So if you want to do that, you know, you add that video. But this is the issue with marketing because we have so many solutions. But like I would have practices who would call me and say, no, we need to get on social media and this is going to be great. And can you help us now? I am a social media coach. So clearly in a business perspective, I should say, of course, 100 percent get on social media. But I never say that. I always come down and say, why do you want social media? Why do you think do you need it? Do you need it because your competition has it? Do you need it because your granddaughter is telling you you need to be on TikTok? Do you, what is the reason behind it, right? And they're like, well, I don't know. We just keep telling, hearing. And then I'm like, let's look at your actual patient numbers. Where are your patients coming from? Who are your patients? And let's say that we run a whole analysis and they're like, well, majority of our patients are in the senior population. You know, we have 
X, Y, and Z, 65 above patients. We that's our that's our bread and butter. That's who we see. So I'm like, okay, well, if that's the case, then we have to break this down and say, where do I spend money? Do I go to TikTok? Do I go to Facebook? Do I go to Instagram? And then you start figuring things out and say, okay, well, we want to go to Facebook. But this is the same population that really works on connection yeah. and communication, and they want to see you. So while you might want to spend $500 on a chat box on your website, perhaps you need a patient receptionist instead right. who's going to answer all those phone calls and make sure that it's easy for them to call you, right? So marketing, people spend so much money on it because we want solutions, but we have no idea who we are targeting audiences to. Right. Now, I want you to go back to that piece because I'm terrible at marketing. Like, I can tell you, this is not a joke. This is a true story. I got on Instagram years ago. And I had one follower. It was my oldest daughter. And then she unfollowed me. And I'm like, you can't do that, honey. And she's like, dad, it's so bad. And what I found myself trying to do was be somebody I wasn't. And so the, the real lesson, I think, in marketing more than anything is you just got to be your favorite patients at the end of the day. They care about the same things. They feel in a trap. So that's probably when you go back to like, who are you? How do you want to? That's probably where you got to start instead of me coming to you and go, hey, I, I want to do billboards, Facebook ads, let's go there, uh, you know, type of a thing. Um, is that is that what you're thinking? Well, exactly. That's, you know, that is a part of it as to understanding who that audience is. The second part of it is also understanding what marketing will work for your specific practice. So if you are like, I have, I have clients who are doing incredible practices who are doing incredible and their entire marketing are mailers. And then I have practices who are doing incredible and their entire marketing is Instagram reels, right? It depends on what you feel comfortable with, what your patients feel comfortable with and what they engage with. And then the third thing is if you understand, if you have a clear plan, then you know you're not going to spend too much money on items that you simply don't need. So most of the times we do marketing because we just need to do it. We are told we need to do it. But if you think about some of the ways that your patients are coming to you, all everybody who's listening right now, I can pretty much guarantee that your current patients are in the top two new patient referrals. Wait, go back. Okay, explain that one. I want you to explain that one. That's great. So your current patients, right? Anybody who you're seeing right now, your current patients are your top, probably in your top two. Yes. New patient referrals. They are the ones who keep sending you new patients. They're Agreed. usually number one or number two. It's between Google and current patients, or if you're really big on social media, that's a different story. But that's how it kind of works. So why is it that we completely ignore our current patients when it comes to our marketing, and we are focused on all of these new things which are out there in the world? Yeah, is it just easier know, to think about something new and sexy and flashy than to really do the hard work that matters? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We all, have, we all have ADD and everybody wants the newest and the flashiest thing. Right. But again, if your audience is not the newest and the flashiest, then they're not going to connect with you. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I really like to focus on, and this is the kind of stuff you could do for free, is you're in your internal marketing. What are you doing to show appreciation to your current patients? Because they are the ones sending you new patients, writing you reviews. So you actually show up on Google and then people read those reviews to come to the practice. Yeah. I'm totally picking up what you're putting down right now. So give me a couple things. So let's say I'm a dentist. I have no money, but now like, I know we need to do this. What can I do today to show a the little bit more one appreciation? Thing, so here's a, something that you could do easily for free. Now, this is a very specific social media campaign. So everybody who's listening to me, you know, just kind of work with, with me through this. You send out an email or a text, your entire patient base, and you say something like, Hey, we are doing patient appreciation. And what we would love to do for patient appreciation is we want to highlight your business on our social media platforms and inside our practice. We know that the last two years have been very tough. If you're our patient, send us a photo of you smiling next to your business or holding your business card, and we will give you a shout out directly on the social media pages and inside our practice. So now let's say I am your patient, Kirk, and you're the dental practice, right? And I get this email and I'm like, oh, they want to give a shout out to my business. That's awesome. This is so amazing. This is their patient appreciation. I mean, who cares about that coffee mug you want to give me? Give me my business is getting brand awareness out of this, right? So now I send you a photo of me smiling, holding my business card, right? And I send it to you. And you post that. You tag my business when you do that. So now my business gets alert. Hey, Dr. Kirk just tagged you on this website or the social media. I'm like, this is awesome. So now I reshare it on my business page, but I also reshare it on my own personal page because my photo's on it. That's so awesome. now your practice is getting in front of all of my friends and family because they're like, 
my dentist doesn't do that. They don't highlight me and my business. What's going on here? So you see, you create strategies and this is all free. Yeah. You send out and you probably have an email system. Your Facebook is probably free. You talk to your patients and then you go a step above. And what you do is if your patients allow you, you have in your office somewhere, find it by a welcome desk or your waiting room area. There's probably an empty wall or something. Create a big sign that says we are doing patient appreciation, highlighting local businesses. Right. And now you literally have all these photos. So everybody coming in is like, how do I get my business up there? Send us a photo of you smiling next to your business. And there you go. Patient appreciation. They are directly now connecting with you. You're doing it for practically nothing. And you're putting this entire strategy where it's directly helping them and helping you get in front of all of their family and friends. Brilliant. Drop the mic. We're 19 (laughs) minutes in. Like my mind is already blown. And that makes so much sense. It makes so much sense because as a business owner or even a team member, like that is awesome to think like that. And I would also think to myself, if I went to my dental office and I'm like, hey, you're featuring all this business, why didn't you ask me? And they're like, we did, but did you get the email? And I go, oh yeah, I did. Like, that's what it means. I would be a little competitive. I would feel FOMO that you guys are featuring all these great people. What an awesome way to connect other people in this whole process. That is brilliant. Thank you, thank you. Well, so, you know, it's all about understanding what your consumers want and what they would need. So for example, during COVID shutdown, I had one of my clients who called me, they're multi-location practice. And a lot of their patients are in the senior population and we all know that they were at high risk. So they're like, Manal, we wanna do something for our patients, what do we do? So I said, you know what, let's come up with something. What is it that they truly need right now? So they sent out an email and said, hey, we know that you may not feel comfortable going grocery shopping right now. If you place your order, we will actually pick it up and drop it at your house. That is awesome. I love and that. And now, too. right? So now their their uh, marketing manager is driving around. They go to whatever their grocery store is, pick up everybody's orders, and they are just driving around, dropping it off. And they were so shocked because they were like, people were coming out of them like with flowers for us and thanking us and telling us. Now, do you think that patient is ever going to leave you? Never. Like never. never. I never. mean, I, I I love my DoorDash person. Like, could you imagine that it was somebody that you actually knew? You know what I mean? Like, how cool is that? You know? So it's just, yeah, it's just finding different ways. Like I have a lot of, uh, and I know a lot of you are probably want to bring in the Gen Xers, the younger families who are out there and you want to work with them. Or if you probably have some Gen Xers in your practice right now, you want to bring in more younger families. Yeah. I know that most times when we do some kind of raffles and we do all of those things, you do a spa basket. Now, nothing wrong with the spa basket. We all love spa. We all love massages. I get it. But let's think beyond that. Beyond yeah. that, If you're a Gen Xer and you're a busy family, we know that you probably don't want to go home and cook after a long day of work and going to soccer practice and bringing the kids home and making sure that everybody's cleaned up and you're trying to clean up, right? So instead of that, why don't you do a week off, let's say hello fresh meals. That's awesome. So now they don't have to worry about it. I have had practices do maid services. They would literally do that. And the parents would be like, you mean somebody's going to come and clean all that laundry and finally clean the garage up? Of course they are. So you have to understand the needs and wants for your consumers. But once you do that, marketing becomes easy. Oh my gosh, you do the maid service. I'm first in line because happy wife, happy life. You know how that works. Like it's just, just free up some time for the people you love. This is fantastic. Like I love the way you think. So if you're listening to this, you're obviously hearing some good how, like how, but I want you to really pay attention to the thinking part because some of the best people you ever meet, they just don't think like anybody else. I've had a lot of marketing experts on and we talk about the cost of postage and blah, blah, blah. Like this is fantastic stuff. Now, this is a question I want to know from you when it comes to the topic of not spending, what do you, like you get to meet a lot of dentists. Where do they fundamentally get wrong when they're going down this road? Oh most, man. Or some of your top things that dentists get wrong. I, you, I would usually say, and I know I shouldn't say it because I'm in the, I am in the marketing field is overspending on websites. Okay. So what should I spend? We just had this question floating around in our chat today. Everybody, I, and like, I, I have me. the perfect answer for you. Okay. Give it to me. Okay, so now I don't build websites. I'm a strategist and I okay. work with clients and I help them figure out a marketing plan. Your website should be as good or better than the competition. Okay. So that's, that's it. 
That's the, th- that's the threshold that you're looking for. That's a threshold. Because again, don't think about you. Think about the consumer. Right. If I was your consumer, I was your potential patient. And if I go to the Google world and I figure out the dentist and I see your competition's website and I see yours, what am I going to choose? I'm going to choose the, the website that makes me feel great. You know, like right. I, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. So now you, you kind of have a threshold. So if you're in an area, like I would have, I have clients who are literally overlooking the Rockefeller Center in New York City in a building. And then I have clients in the middle of nowhere in Montana that have no dentists in 20 mile radius. And the kind of marketing they need and the budget they need is very different. And what they spend money on is very different. So if that comes down to it, if you're in an area where the websites are okay, they're, they're not all the hooplas in the world and da da da, you don't have to spend that kind of money then. Yeah. But if you are in a competitive market and if you are somewhere where everybody's website is this amazing thing and they are brilliant and they are you know, beautiful and have all these hooplas coming out of it, then unfortunately you will have to spend that money because that's your competition. Right. So when you think about it with marketing, the number one mistake we make in general is that we think it's all about us. Nothing is about us. It's all about the consumers and how they react to something. Yeah. And if we can focus on that, we will always be successful in our marketing. And that's why they call it user experience and all those things. But, and mm-hmm. on the same note, like, I love this. Um, let's say I have no money at all. Would you put website up there as like one of the top priorities? Okay. So let's say I'm a dentist. I go, no, I don't have any money at all. I'm a scratch start. You know, you've heard that before. Where, I mean, what are some of the non-negotiables? Okay. We got to get would, a couple um, Before I even go to the website, I would just have you make a Google business page because it's free. Yes, I would. I would literally create. Have you create a Google My Business page? Make sure you ask everybody and everybody that you're seeing, all the patients, all of them, to write you amazing, amazing reviews. Write a saga around it. Make sure the reviews are like love letters to how amazing the practice is and all that stuff because it's free, right? Before you even have, you could have a website, but if it doesn't show up in the search engines, what's the point? Right. So the first reality is you need that Google My Business page for free. And then Google My Business page directly has post, right? So for example, it directly has post. So you can start creating post about everything you're doing. And if you log into Google My Business page, it has a free version of a website there for you. Wow. Now, do I recommend this? No, I recommend for you to have a proper website. I highly recommend that. But if you have no money, you are just getting started, people are going to go to your website once they find you and look at your reviews then focus on those reviews organically ask everybody make that google my business page start climbing it because kirk you and i both know businesses that we go to that have no website but i have awesome reviews yeah and that's where we go yeah now go back to one thing and i apologize if this is a stupid question but you said google posts post things and would you consider that some type of a social media where you're posting things what is it and I know Google, I, I mean, I don't know anybody at Google, but I know their game. Their game is like, no, we're going to build one platform that everyone comes over to our thing. Is that a plan of the future? Is, I mean, obviously a good plan for now, but what is a Google post? So yeah, Google post is similar to social media where you can make a post. What happens is that when your listing shows up on Google, the post shows up at the bottom. So if you're making post and a post stays that for seven days. You could do offers on it. You could do events on it. You could do posts if you're posting on social media on it. So if somebody's coming across your listing, now you are directly showing them something specific happening in your practice. So for this new practice that has no money, this is a great place for you to show off your team, to show off your culture. Perhaps you have some sort of a new new patient special running. Perhaps you have a whitening special running. This is where you will start showing it. But the number one thing I will tell you is to do that. Um, is to focus on that. The number two thing I would tell you is to make sure that you have one of the biggest, very cliche, uh, big banner right outside your practice that said, accepting new patients. Okay, you got to tell us why, because I know that that is true. But a lot of dentists will go, no, I'm not doing that. But there's a huge why behind that. What is it? Well, Drive-by continues to be in the top five referrals for new patients. Yes. We all know that we keep driving that road and we all have seen businesses because we keep driving by those roads. I just drove by a chiropractor who has the biggest, ugliest banner I've ever seen that said accepting new patients. But now I know the chiropractor is there accepting new patients. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) 
Now, years ago, we used to look at these metrics and I've been out of it for a while on the marketing side of things. But the number two thing that was referral, because we used to track this when it wasn't easily trackable, was signs. So some dentists would spend all this money on CAD cam, all Mm -hmm. this stuff. They'd have all this gorgeous stuff and they'd have this tiny little like horrible sign. I'm like, dude, if you were going to do anything, create a sign. I actually have a story on this. There's a dentist. His name's Charlie. And you know who you are. He knew how important this was. In Maryland, he has he put his practice up in this beautiful little area. Well, the state, the city ordinances wouldn't let him have the sign like so far from the from the ground. So what he did was he brought in 70 tons of dirt and he made the mound this high and he made the (laughs) sign huge within the ordinance. Now everybody was angry, but he said the phone did not stop ringing because the sign, it's crazy. Now, um, but the banner, the sign, it's amazing how many people live right next to you and they don't even know you exist. They don't know you exist. And I know that a lot of times when I talk to practices, they are like, but no, it's so ugly. And I'm like, I know. I know it's ugly and I know it doesn't go with your everything that you're doing, but you need patience. Once you have the money, you can start throwing it at Google AdWords. Once you have the money, you could start throwing it at a website. But first you have to have some, a little bit of something. And this is again for that doctor who said they have no money. They have no money and they're starting out. So this is for them. I mean, clearly I would recommend that if you are opening a practice, you have some money to spend on marketing so you could get patients coming through the door. But if you don't, Google My Business page. And and here's another little tip. You know, once you start becoming active on Google My Business page and things like that, it's funny, you would log in and Google's like, here's $500 credit for you to use on AdWords. Yeah. And they actually give you the $500 to use on AdWords. And then here's another trick. And again, I'm not going to tell you to do this, but this is for that dentist who has no money. If you call Google and you say, I want the $500 credit, and there will be a phone number there. And if you were to call them, somebody at Google will set up your ads for you on Google. That is awesome. I did not know that. All right, you're giving me way too much homework now. I gotta do all this. Or I could just hire you. That would be great. What do you think? So so there are ways you can go around it. You know, so there are people who are like, we don't have any money. You'll be fine. Yeah. You just have to focus again on the right, right kind of feedback that you can receive. Yeah, and And you gotta start thinking too. So to your point on the signage, like some of you might be listening, go, I'm in a big office building. How would I even do that? So there's a practice in South Dakota and you know who you are. And it's a great one. They lith- lithographed, is that the right word? They lithographed this, you know, SUV and they put it in the front parking lot. It stays there every time. And the guy's like, dude, I do a lot of marketing. It's crazy how much that truck brings in. So he found a way to put a sign on one of the busiest streets and people come in from the truck. It's crazy. But yeah, you just got to think. What else would you suggest if I don't have a budget? Well, again, then it all comes down to customer service because we, again, know that our current patients are our brand new. They're going to bring us our brand new patients. So if you're doing that, it starts with your community. Where are you going? Where are you spending your time? It needs to be you, your entire team. You need to just have that brochure or whatever it is. Start going to all the local businesses. Introduce yourself. Tell them who you are. Go to the medical practices. Start building an entire marketing plan for them. So when you go to them and say, hey guys, so we are the dental practice, we just opened here, we were to come and introduce ourselves. By the way, we are neighbors, I see that. And if you guys were to come in, you are also can take a take home free white thing. That's awesome. So we would love to see you, right? Because a lot of it is ground marketing, but you people need to see you. They have to see who you are, they have to connect with you. And I know we all hate that. We hate going randomly and surprise a business and we know we are gonna get that cold shoulder. But unfortunately, when we have no money and we are trying to open up a business, we have to hustle. This is a part of it. I mean, we have all done it. So this is the same thing. So I would I would say spend a lot of time in your community, going around, introducing yourself, go to the all the religious places, go to the police station, you know, go to the mayor's office, go to the uh, join the local business bureau, whatever that is, the uh, you know, chamber of commerce. Start going everywhere. Introduce yourself. Tell them who you are, and then also look at the local grocery stores. And a lot of the grocery stores will actually have a bulletin board where people can put things in. This is really popular uh, for dry cleaners. Really? A lot of, yeah, a lot of dry cleaners actually have bulletin boards where people can put down, hey, for rent or da 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 da. Start putting your information out in the community anywhere and everywhere that you can because people need to know you are there and you exist. 
Yeah, the, our Starbucks that's right around the corner has uh, a bulletin board that they support local businesses. And it's fun to watch that. You know, the local production, the play productions, all that kind of stuff. It's mm -hmm. I always look at it when I'm waiting for a cup. I'm like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. So I totally agree. You just can't. The point is this. You just can't sit back and wait for patients to call. You got to do something. You got to go out. And no, you have energy. to. You absolutely have to. It's like any business, anything you try to open up. There's going to be a lot of work and a lot of time that you spend on it in the beginning. And that's okay, right? And especially, so now if you're getting patients coming through the door, you wanna have, make sure they get the best appointment possible. But I'm sure Kirk, you have talked about this before and we are both on the same page with this. If you have, if you're a small practice like that, you're just opening up, pick up that phone after the, after the day and call that patient. Yeah. Hey, how are you doing? Just wanted to check in, is everything okay about the treatment? That's how you, build loyalty that's how you build trust because nobody else is doing that that's what's going to help you connect with your patients as well and you know mrs smith by the way we, as you know we just opened this up thank you so much for being in our patient family if you have family or friends that you think would be great for our practice please let us know yeah you know have a conversation it is amazing to me how many people don't do that it is crazy. I'm like, do you call patients? And they go, no, it's too crazy busy, but I got to get some more new patients. So what you do screams you care or you don't care. I mean, even calling and leaving a simple little message saying, I care, just thinking about you. Um, it's really important to build a practice, especially if you're going to be practicing for two or three decades. We love it when the top person calls us and is just mm -hmm. thinking about us. So it's pretty cool. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, as I start to mature in practice, you know, and I want to start spending a little money, where do I go uh, next? Uh, depends who your audience is. So if you are somebody who is specifically working on treatment, so if you want more treatment patients, if you're doing dental implants, or if you're just started, if you're doing Invisalign, if that's something that you're doing, you will have to spend some money on Google AdWords budget-wise because Google is where people directly go and write down dental implants. And then your ad has to pop up. They have to go through that process. So that's where I would say you could spend some money. Now, let's say that you are somebody who's like, well, I don't really care about too much treatment. I just want new patients in the door. I just want the moms and dads and the families just to show up just so that my hygiene schedule is filled. So then I could get treatment. Now, if your hygiene schedule is a different thing, that's a whole different kind of marketing. For your hygiene schedule, I would recommend, yes, you always want to make sure your reviews and all of that stuff is good, but I would highly do internal marketing and not just internal marketing based on, let's do a referral plan or something like that. No, I would do an entire, so I'll, I'm gonna give you an example. And this is again, a very specific strategy. So the listeners who are listening, I hope they can listen to this again, right? Oh, for <laughs> sure, go I'm going to, okay. that's for sure. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so uh, something that I would love to do is, let's say that you look at your top patients and let's say you are trying to, you have a patient, uh, again, clearly not a real patient, I'm just making this patient up, uh, 40 years old. Her name is Samantha. Samantha's 40. She brings her whole family to you guys. You guys love Samantha. She shows up on time. She pays her bills. You know, you love seeing them. You want more Samanthas to come to your practice. But what you do is you call Samantha. Say, hey, Samantha, we are doing patient appreciation this month and you are our chosen patient. And what we would love to do is we would love to support you. Are you a part of a charity? Perhaps you belong to a book club. Oh, you do belong to a book club. We would like to sponsor your next book club. Wow. Love it. So now, I don't know if everybody who are our listeners are in a book club. I'm in a book club. You know what we do in a book club? We drink wine and we talk about everything but the book. I'm in a, I was just going to say, I'm in a book club too, but there's no books. We just call it a there's book club. No, we book right? it. So he, we book it and then we have beers. So is that bad? Don't judge. I love books too. So, and my wife is in one too, you know? So, and I'm like, what'd you do? Did you even talk about the book? No, she's like, oh, I just giggled the whole night. But you're exactly right. You know? Well, the next thing I know, I'll be sitting around in this table in a book club and here comes some wine and some cheese and some pizzas. And the Samantha is going to be like, my dentist sent us this. So all of her friends who are like Samantha in that book club are going to be like, my dentist doesn't send us stuff. What do you mean your dentist? The next two hours are going to be about your practice with people like Samantha. Right. The next question is, who is your dentist? <laughs> like you're influencing the conversation you're never part of. You know, and I've heard that even with flowers. You send flowers right. to a woman at work, of course. Everybody goes around the table and goes, who did you, do your husband's in? No, my dentist. Well, the next question is, who's your dentist? It's crazy. So little gestures that show you care. And those are great supportive efforts. Love it. Absolutely. Yeah, but be specific, be strategic about it, right? Okay. So you're picking Samantha. 
you are being strategic about it. So this is where internal marketing, the difference between internal marketing many times is that people are like, we are going to do a patient appreciation. I'm like, great, what are you doing? And they will have this eight by 11 little flyer that says we are doing X, Y, and Z. And nobody's looking at it. Nobody does anything about it. It's yet another piece of paper on the welcome desk that has 20 other pieces of paper. So that doesn't work. I mean, yeah. things are only as big of a deal as you make them. I had a client in New York, uh, in New Jersey, actually, a couple of locations. He's a great guy, uh, he, you know, great guy. And um, I know everybody's gonna listen to it and they're gonna be like, you're crazy. He gave away a Peloton. That's awesome. So how did he do that? Give, give us a little insight. So there was this whole marketing campaign and we were talking about different things and he wanted to do something that was crazy and big. Again, I have some money, I wanna bring in new patients, I wanna create a big buzz. And again, like I said, it depends what kind of patients you want and a lot of it starts with internal marketing. Now he himself is a runner, he has done you know, New York Marathon, all these things, he owns a Peloton. So I told him, um, would you mind if you send a photo of you working out on the Peloton? And he's like, okay, and then, this is crazy, Kirk, but it's hilarious. We got a life-size cutout of him on his Peloton. Wow. And we put it right in the waiting room. And we created this entire marketing campaign around it. And everybody coming in, it became their photo area. Everybody's taking photos with it. The front desk girls are decorating the Peloton for all the different holidays going on. It ran for a few months. And it became something of a very special thing. And he had really good conversion ROI and all of that stuff from it. But here's the fun part. If you want to, again, connect with your audience with marketing, things are only as big of a deal as you make them. So if you want to go ahead and give out a spa basket, don't just do a spa basket, make a big deal around it. Right. Make sure that everybody knows about it. So you have to start thinking about different ways when it comes to internal marketing on how do you strategize so that you are getting some ROI from it, so that you are seeing feedback from it. Usually that doesn't happen. Only the front desk person or the office manager and the dentist will know what is going on and nobody else knows what's going on. Yeah, I love, I don't think the Peloton story is too crazy. I have a Peloton. I totally appreciate it. Actually, that's brilliant. And if you want to go a layer deeper, you're probably going to attract people that like the idea of a Peloton. You're oh, that promoting. Was the same. And then going back to what you said before is like, listen, you got to be very intentional about this. So you mentioned the word Samantha, name Samantha. You're basically going to be proactive and intentional about getting more Samanthas. You know what I mean? Instead of trying to get yeah. more of everybody in your practice. You're a genius. I love this. Well, so. one of the things that, well, thank you. But one of the things that we, uh, that I love to do, and this is not new in marketing. This is actually in my book as well. And it's an entire chapter in my book. It's called Building Your Avatar. Now, building avatars is a very common thing in the marketing world, in the business world. It's not so common in the dental world. But one of the things that I love to do is build an entire avatar. And I do this at workshops and or I'm working with clients. And this is how you know that your avatar is a 40-year-old Samantha or a 60-year-old Sam, you know, or an 80-year-old John, whatever that is. And you come up with your specific avatars and you understand oh, this is the person I'm trying to bring to my practice. So if that's the person I want to bring to my practice, here's where I should be marketing. Yeah. Or here's how I should be marketing. And then marketing becomes easier. It doesn't become this overwhelming task of, I need to be on TikTok or I need to be here. I do, do, do. No, you have to be where Samantha is. Yeah, it's crazy. How, like I, you're talking my language now because that's crazy important. So if you're a dentist, you're like, I don't need an avatar. Just ask your team members, what's our ideal patient? And notice how different their explanation is for every single one of them. And as you could imagine, as your practice grows, we all got to be on the same page. We all got to be creating what we're creating here in the future. Because as a dentist, like you said at the beginning, you're not going to fail. Everything works. It's just a question of what are you working on? Because if you work on it, it works. I love this. I, okay, I have like 90 more questions and I told you I had to be respectful of your time. I'm going to have you back again and again and again and again. A couple things. Any last thoughts? I, we're going to get to your book. I want people, I'm going to, I want a copy of your book. Um, but I want any last thoughts on this as far as how to not spend money on marketing and still get ROI. So my book is actually called Why Your Marketing is Killing Your Business and What to Do About It. Okay, that so, title just hurts yeah. my brain because it's true, okay? Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you, there are so many different pointers that you could take, but if I were to simplify everything is don't focus so much on yourself, focus on what the consumer needs and wants from you. 
and that's it. And then marketing becomes easy. Just I, I have a lot of times where people will be like, treat others as you treat yourself when it comes to marketing. And I completely agree. But what I don't agree with is if you don't do any research, if you have no idea what kind of demographics you are trying to bring to the practice, you are just throwing money and thinking something's going to work. And that's where you're going to see that low conversion. So just spend some time, think about your consumers, think about the kind of people you're going to bring to your practice, do some research, you know, play with some numbers, and then focus on that. So that's the one thing that I just would like to say to everybody on here. And remember, you do not have to spend crazy amount of money. It's okay for you not to spend too much money. We used to live in a world where we used to have a certain percentage, you know, spend 10% or 20% and da da da. da. And, I, and I agree that it's still true in some part but we do percentage of collections, but marketing has changed so much that you could spend 20 bucks on Facebook for the entire month and get in front of an audience if you like. Wow. You can make a fun video and go viral, <laughs> you know, go onto Instagram and you could now dance around and be, be taken seriously as a dentist. So, so many things you can do now. The world has opened up. Don't be afraid to try new things just because they've been done that way. doesn't mean you have to do it that way. Yeah, Manal, this is awesome. You are brilliant and I need your help. So like, it's just a lot of brain space and a lot of energy to think about this when, and as you can see, somebody's already thinking about this. So now how the heck do we get your book? Like, where do we find it? All that kind of stuff. Um, and then I want you to send people, how do I follow you? I'm going to encourage you guys, if you're listening, follow her on social media. It is so good. Like it's, it's a feed stopper. You know how you kind of scroll through and you're like, oh, there's Manal. Oh, that's a good one. So how do I get your book and how do I find you? Um, sure. So if you just go to Amazon, Put down my name, Manal Sampat, M-I-N-A-L-S-A-M-P-A-T. It's my book is actually a number one Amazon bestseller, so you should be able to find it right away, and you'll get it. And my website is manalsampat.com. Again, M-I-N-A-L-S-A-M-P-A-T.com. All the information is on there. Social media, Manal Sampat LLC, Instagram, Facebook. Um, if follow on Instagram, we do a lot of fun stuff, reels, videos, tips, strategies all day long happening there. If you want to directly connect with me. Facebook, Facebook friend request me, Manal Sampat, you will see the photo. Um, just send me a friend request because I am very active. Me as a person is very active on Facebook. So that's where we can connect and talk. You are awesome. I'm so glad I could call you my friend and I get to connect with you on this. We're going to do a 12 month challenge. Like you're going to give us a new thing every single month and just like make us better. Push us. Come on. What do you think? I don't know. Of so. course, let's do it. Awesome. <laughs> they, they may all meet me by the end of it, but you know. Yeah, this is awesome. All right. You guys, you got to check it out. Make sure you get her book. Follow her on social media. I promise you, you will enjoy it. You'll stalk her like we do. It's awesome. So, um, and stick around, Manal, while we say goodbye to everybody else. But gosh, thank you guys for listening today. Hey, if you enjoyed today, which I know you did, share this with your friends. Keep sending us suggestions. Let us know what you want to learn about marketing. And I'll have Manal back. And we'll just ask her the questions and have her bring some of the best practices to help you create a better practice and a better life. So until we see you guys next time, keep watching the best practices show. You guys enjoy your day. Mm -hmm.